What's up YouTube, Jay here, and unless you've been living under a rock for the past year or two, you've definitely heard of ChatGPT, and chances are, especially if you're seeing this video, you've probably used it or played around with it at least a little bit. Well, in this video, I'll be showing you how to use ChatGPT from inside of a Node script, and this could be useful if you're building an application or a website, and you just want to integrate AI with it in some way you know ai is the new hype thing right now people are building it into basically all their tools if you want to call jet gbt from inside some code this can help you with that if you're using node anyway let's hop into the video actually before i hop into the video i'll mention i also have a text-based article on my website i'll link it down in the video description some people prefer text i feel like text is great for quickly grabbing some data and also for copy pasting code of course it's great but some people also prefer a video walkthrough, which is why this video exists. All right, let's hop into it. We're gonna start by setting up a new NPM project, and then we'll add the OpenAI library into our project and copy some code from their quick start guide. And then after that, we'll create an OpenAI account, create an API key, and buy some credits so that we can use the API. So with that said, let's hop into it. Uh, you will need Node and NPM installed in order to do this, I've got links to how you can install them for both Linux, Unix, or Windows, or uh, Fastnode Manager works for either of those. Once you have Node and NPM installed, you can verify by running Node NPM-V, Node-V. You can see I've got both those installed. All right, once you've got that, create a directory. I'm calling mine OpenAI Example and change into that directory. And then we will create the NPM project. So I'll copy this. I've already got my directory and I'm in my directory. I'm gonna run that to create our new NPM project. And then I'll set up our node script. If you want to make sure you have the latest versions of the code, you can hop over to OpenAI's quick start. Most of my code here is copied from their page. So this is really the source of truth. So we'll follow along on here. I'd put it all in this same page for convenience because it's nice to have everything all in one place. So we'll come in here. Here is our command to add the open AI library to our project. While that's going, we will grab this code and we're gonna create a main.js file. You can call it whatever you want, but once we create our start command, we'll have to use main.js. And basically what this is doing is it's pulling in the open AI library. It's creating an instance of the open AI uh, connection. And then we're calling chat GPT right here. We're calling the GPT for a mini version, which is one of the less expensive models. We're giving it a system prompt, which is basically the developer telling, hey, ChatGPT, this is what you're trying to do. And then this user prompt, user prompt would be more coming from the end user or coming from your program. In this case, both these are hard coded, but likely this would be coming from somewhere in your application, some data that the user has created or submitted for the application to process. But after that, we get the completion result from OpenAI and we log it out to the user. So we've got that file created. Another thing we'll have to do, because this is using the ECMAScript module import instead of CommonJS, CommonJS would be like const open AI equals require open AI, but this MJS, which is really the new syntax, we will have to add type module to our package JSON. So I'll pop over here, add type module just underneath main index.js, and then we'll have to add our start script. So call it start. And it's just going to run the main.js package with a node. And if we run this now, so we can run npm run start, and npm run start will run this, which runs our file that we created, we will get an error. And the reason we're getting an error is, as it says, we don't have a key set. Uh, the OpenAI API key environment variable is missing. If you want to set it directly in the code, you can do that by specifying uh, just like this. Of course, we'd have to paste in our key, but we are going to add it as an environment variable using a .env file because you don't want to commit this token to GitHub or any, you don't want to save this where other people can see it, for example, in a Git repository. So a good way to do that is to use a .env file, which is not committed. So what we're gonna do is, first we do have to go ahead and create the API key. To do this, you'll have to create an OpenAI account, which we can do over here. Once you have your account created, you can click the gear cog, 
and add some credits. So unfortunately, OpenAI has ended their promotional programs where they give you some free credits. Um, so now you have to you have to buy the credits yourself. And the minimum you can put in, at least in the US, the minimum you can put in is $5. So you can click add to credit balance and then put in $5, put your credit card information and you can buy $5 worth of credits. The good news is the pricing per request is, in my opinion, pretty reasonable. Uh, if we scroll down here, you can see some prices for these things. The model we're using is actually ChatGPT for a mini, which is even less expensive. So it's like 15 cents per 1 million input tokens, which you're not going to be putting in 1 million input tokens. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure if a token is a word or if a token is a character. I think a token is a word. So this would be like, you know, 12 or 15 tokens whereas a million tokens cost 15 cents. So in the past few weeks that I've had this, uh, these credits and been playing around with it, I've used four cents, so kind of nice, but it's not free, but it's not super expensive. All that said, you'll go ahead and add your credits. Once you've added your credits, you can go over to the left side, click API keys, and you can create a new API key. So create a new secret key, give it a name, YouTube demo two, cause I ran through once and didn't like the output. So running through it again, uh, you or service account. I'm not sure the difference between these two. I believe service account may be able to be transferred or shared between multiple users accounts versus you would only be good for your account. So if you're, you know, creating this for a business or a team, you would probably want to use service account. But in this case, I'm just going to use you give it a name, create secret key. Once the key is created, you don't want to share this with anybody because if anybody else has this key, they can call ChatGPT as you and your account will be charged. So don't share this with anybody. You can see it here on my screen because I'm going to be deleting this immediately after this tutorial. So we're going to grab this and then we're going to paste it into our .env file. And if we come back over to my article, we'll scroll down. So we've created the OpenAI account. We've purchased some credits, step-by-step -step walkthrough. Uh, for when you're doing it yourself and then we've created a secret key and then we created the .env file we pasted the key in now we have to paste in we pasted in the key which is the value now we have to paste in the name of the environment variable so we'll copy this and then at the very beginning of this .env file we'll paste this and this basically sets an environment variable with the name openai underscore api underscore key where the value is our key that's over here on the right. So we'll save that. And then we need to enable our node script to actually pull in the environment variable. And to do that, we'll be using the .env library. So I'll paste that in. And then we'll have to import .env into our script and put our imports at the top. And then we'll have to run .env config. And so this is pulling in a library. This .env config is what actually loads this variable um, into the node project. And this will need to be run before we create the OpenAI instance because we need that variable loaded before we create the instance. And at this point, you know, we've got our script, we've got our libraries, we've bought some credits, and we've created our API key. At this point, this script should actually run. If we run npm run start, again, npm run start runs this, which runs node main.js, which is this here, which loads in our key, which we created in our .env file, creates the instance, and then it calls chat GPT, GPT for a mini with these prompts. And here we go, we have our output from ChatGPT, which is the haiku about recursion and programming. Of course, if we want to change uh, what we're writing about, we could say write a haiku about dynamic programming in programming, which doesn't quite make sense, but here we go. Recursive whispers, overlapping sub problems, efficiency blooms. Maybe. Um, and that's pretty much it for calling ChatGPT. Of course, likely this would be coming from an input from the user, either command line argument or somewhere in your program. Um, but in this case, these are just hard coded because this is kind of just a building block on how to call ChatGPT from inside Node. 
you'll have to wrap this with something that's actually useful and use ChatGPT uh, in your app to do something useful. That's about it for calling ChatGPT. You can also use different models, which if we go to the model section in the open API or the open AI documentation, you can see we've got a few different models few different models listed down here. Some of them are more or less expensive, faster, slower performance wise. Some are built for code or image generation, uh, all these different types of things. So you can play around with what works best for you. Uh, if you're just doing simple text, I kind of like the GPT-40 mini because it's so inexpensive, um, but your mileage may vary. Oh, I will mention one other thing. So there are two common errors that I've run into relating to the ChatGPT API. One of them is this open AI API key environment variables missing or empty. If that's the case, refer to these steps down here, check, make sure all these are set up correctly. The other thing is this rate limit error. If you see like rate limit error 429, it mentions something about billing and current quota, all this stuff. This means that either you don't have credits in your account or it can also mean that at one point you didn't have credits in your account and then you created an API key and then you added credits, in which case the API key that was created before you had credits may not work. In my experience, it doesn't seem to work. So you'll have to create a new API key after adding your credits and then you can just delete the old API key. Um, but the new API key that you've created after you've already added credits, that one should work. So if you see that uh, rate limit error 429, try that out. So in this video, we create an NPM project and a node script, which uses the OpenAI library to interact with the ChatGPT AI model. We also created OpenAI account and API key to authenticate with the API. And finally, we ran a simple script, which makes a call to ChatGPT via the OpenAI library and returns a response to the console. If you found the video helpful and would like other people to see it, make sure to leave a like down below so that other people will be more likely to see it. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below. And if you like the video and would like to see more videos like it in the future, please consider subscribing. As always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.